Uh, Houston, Houston Rockets, Bayou City Boys, talking about head coaching candidates because we all know what's going to happen at the end of the season. Our boy Steven Silas is out of there. But we were just saying, like, uh, you got to give us a little bit of credit for letting him play the contract out, the three years. He had a three-year deal. He played it out. He knows he's not coming back. Uh, as long as – like, he said that he was proud, and I was like – you should be because the team that you're leaving is about as completely opposite as the team you walked into. Like you legitimately walked onto a team with Harden, John Wall, and Boogie. Yep. And you're not leaving with that. So, I mean, I appreciate you for sticking with it. Yeah. And that's where I feel like both sides kind of were like, Hey, this is not what we planned, but this is what happened. And it's, I mean, it's it sucked for him having James Harden here, and that's what you're thinking. Him, John Wall, okay, I'm gonna have a competitive team, I can figure it out, and then completely gone, gutted, and all youngsters, uh, all under 19. <laughs> it's like what makes me feel bad for Silas is that I think that he know he has the smarts, the basketball IQ to be the coach. He don't have the personality we need, yeah. like. Uh, like we need uh, somebody to be a dick, to be honest with you, because I mean, when when your front office don't know how to behave either, then somebody's got to stick up for the the sanctity of what basketball is and take yeah. it take motive out of it. Yeah, it feels like at times like the youngsters were kind of running stuff, uh, and I mean, the benefit of what we saw this season of them was they grew as a whole together, like. All the stuff from the beginning of the year, seeing them kind of like you could see them run into each other, not really liking it. You don't really see that no more. You see Jabari and Shangoon hanging out. You see Tari and them hanging out. You see Jalen and Kevin Poor. You see uh, Kenyon looking like he's cool to be here right now. It they just feel like that nucleus is there now, and then they're they're all about each other type of thing. And I like that because we did not see that. <laughs> Not in the beginning of the season. My question is, is I wonder if we really got to see who could do what because we never we never had to really play real basketball. Yeah. You know it what I'm saying? Like, like what's gonna game. happen when a coach comes in and puts you in a position and you have to uh make sure that certain tasks get done and yeah. then we find out next year you can't do it. It's like, oh shit, Sangoon really can't play defense, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of where I'm at too. Like, I, I just I want to know like what coach we're getting, so we I kind of figure out what it is. But I think we talked. I mean, we talked about it a bit on Bayou City Boys. Was I can't fall in love with all of you. I, there's there's got to be a few that I'm really in love with, and the rest, if I have to get rid of you for some stuff, I'm gonna get rid of you for some stuff. And mm-hmm. I need some bets on here. I need I need a probably a point guard on here, like and. For me, I mean, my top two that I'm keeping for sure is Jalen and Jabari. Word. And then I would put right under them is probably Sangoon. And for me, and that's I that's where I, I'm at. Like I'll say this. Ooh. I got Sangoon as probably my fourth. One okay. player I can't that Jabari and Jalen are uh, 100 percent untouchable to me. Yeah. But the third, and I don't consider this guy a building block, but I'm so glad he's on our team, would be Tari. Okay, yeah. he's Well, yeah, he's up there too with me, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I value Tari more than I do Singoon. Yeah. yeah you no, know, that's not a shot at Singoon, but. I will say this, though. I do see Singoon being a very good trade piece if I had to, though. Like, he's, out of all of my pieces that I'm not willing to trade with, he would be the one that I'm like, Oh, let me. Well, that's what I'm to... saying. And I asked this question many, 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 many weeks ago. Is it within the realm of possibility that Singoon is re- closer to his ceiling than we realize? Because if he is, then we're about to implore that the Patriots way and trade you while your value is highest. I'd rather be a year early than a year late. Yeah. Are we seeing a very young Luis Scola out there? Yeah. In the NBA edition? Are we like. And. I think that's the thing too. It it's hard because you get NBA players that talk about him and they're very high on him. And it's not Scrubs, it's Nicola, it's Anthony Edwards, it's all these guys, Kevin Durant. So it's but guys the, that can ball. That's the thing though, is like 
watch the game yourself. Like yeah. I, I like the the comp to to Joker is just not fair because it, y'all not the same. Y'all kind of the same, but not the same. You know, you can't. Yeah, yeah. When when we ask Sengun to go do those kind of things, it's he doesn't. He makes flashy passes, but he doesn't facilitate like Joker does. Because when no, he's yeah. at his best, the team's not doing good. Yeah. And and that's the thing, like, I, I feel when people are like, oh, we need to play him the way that Joker plays in Denver. It, they're not the same player, dude. You can't. And we see sometimes what happens with Denver when they do that only, and it doesn't work. It, yeah. it, the, the way the NBA is, it's so fast-paced now. You have to change stuff up all the time. And that's where I'm, I'm at to the point where it's like, if you want to keep all four of those, Tari Eason, yeah, he has to be up there. He he was my fourth one for sure. The biggest, the, the thing that pisses me off about the whole situation is all going to be alleviated with those four, none of those four having to leave if Singun just comes off the bench. Six men. He's six men. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. come off the bench. And you 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 would be the probably a, a front runner for six man of the year every year. He could be Straight like up. our um I, I look at him kind of like um a Lamar Odom type of guy, like a six man off the bench type. I got of guy. a better comp than that. He reminds uh, me of when David Lee came off the bench for Golden State when they started their run. It's like who who's gonna match this power forward's energy who will push the rock and finishes at the rim. You know what I mean? They have a lot of the same deficiencies, but he reminds me of that kind of guy. And yeah. the second David Lee went to the bench, that team just got good. No, oh, yeah. And I mean, I think he's that type of player also that he just wants to win. So he's like, I don't care as long as I'm getting some playing time, I'm getting my stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. You'll still get starter minutes. Yeah. You just mm-hmm. don't start the game. So Yeah, yeah. I need the tempo different, and then let's, we can well, work the it defense, around there. Our defense is so much different when – he's not on the floor but jabari and tari are like because yeah. those two guys put people in position and they switch everything and they rebound and yeah. they also can rebound and push even though i hate when jabari dribbles sometimes but he does it it, it looks so bad sometimes yeah it does it's like where are you going you don't even know <laughs> um i for coaches i guess i mean we we know there's a 99 percent chance we're getting a new coach like I'll leave the one there just because we don't know for sure. But we're about pretty sure that we're getting a new coach. And and so I'm guessing, I mean, we keep hearing the same names pop up. Mm-hmm. It's really three, four of them that keep popping up on them. But I guess out of those, who would you be more entertained with? I mean, we talk about it all the time. I I'm, honestly we you and I watch so much sports. At the at this point, I do not know what sports and entertainment mean together. Like it doesn't work that way. I just need something to not piss me off, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my best. You and I talked about it on Bay City Boys. Kenny Atkinson it was what would make me feel the best. Like because of what the track record you had in Brooklyn, the fact that you've been sitting on the bench over there in Golden State. And then seeing what Mike Brown did in Sacramento when he left Golden State, like yep. all three, that combination of things makes me feel good that we could be going in the right direction. Ime Odoka, also pretty good suggestion to me, but like we said, it's like I don't know how good of a coach you really are, considering you inherited a team that been to the conference finals. So, yeah, the whole Frank Vogel, like no disrespect, bro. I know you got a chip. You've been a coach forever, but like. I would not feel good about you being here. I don't want you here. Uh, you're, uh, you were, you're LeBron's slut. Like LeBron ran through you. I don't want you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't. And I feel like there's certain coaches that dictate to the superstar, and there's certain coaches that are like, yeah, you're my superstar. I'm still gonna do this shit because this is my choice. And I feel like Vogel is kind of like that. Okay, I'm gonna do what my superstar wants. And we got some knuckleheads on our team. Let's be honest. Like, the goon squad is nothing to play with. Not not at all. But, in, 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 because yesterday we talked about it. It was like, if everybody else can say stupid shit, and so can we, right? Yeah. So let's just, let's just like think about a scenario that's a little out there, but it might work. The Clippers suck. Would y'all be willing to trade Tyron Luke? 
Because he they would be might. the perfect coach for our team. Ime Udoka is at the Lakers Clippers game today. So it's I was gonna say trade us Tyron Lou and then y'all hire Ime and then win win. And there we go. And for me, Lou's not a bad coach. He and Lou is a good coach. Yes. He has he just has shitty luck with his superstars in health. Um uh, I mean, anybody that can get Russell Westbrook to do what he's doing right now, you are a great coach, bro. Like, you are doing – there's something about you right now that I'm like – and I feel for them he's going to be the scapegoat for that Clippers team. Well, my thing is is what he did in Cleveland. He, he's the LeBron slut too. And then, you know, you come to this team and deal with all of that. It's like he's yeah. battle-tested. Do you think he cares about some little kids in Houston? He's like, no, I'm going to go in there and pop the belt and they're going to get your shit together. And <laughs> yeah, that's how that's yeah. going to go. Now, I for me, I would as a like a, a dark horse for sure. I'd be cool with with. Lou, it's one like, of those things like we talk about Mike Tomlin. It's cr- it's crazy to think about it, but it's like if you're really trying to get good, Houston, then entertain all options. You know what I'm saying? What about uh? I mean, we've we've talked about him a few times. Sam Cassell, are you still on the maybe of that? I always wanted him to be a coach, but then I also feel like I look at Portland and. It's like is Chauncey Billups making that team better? No. I don't know. Like he, think- they're doing good, I guess. Okay, but I, like there's like a slow development about that team, and I was like, I have a feeling that it might be the same with Cassell. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then also too, it's like I think that you have to bring somebody in with enough of a resume that those young boys have to respect it. And that's that's kind of where I feel like. Silas, the end of Silas is right now is okay. They're you can look at the guys, they're turning into young men in the NBA. Their their demeanors change, they're wanting to win more. At first, it kind of felt like, oh, we lost whatever, but now it's yeah. kind of like, nah, I gotta get this damn win. And they're starting to understand the NBA lifestyle a bit more. So I feel like now is the perfect time to get that battle-minded, battle-tested coach. All right, let's take this next level up because I we have to see these guys develop into something of what they're supposed to be next year. I mean, you with Jalen Green putting up numbers he's doing, Jabari doing stuff he's been doing this season on the defensive end, on the offensive end, you have to utilize that and grow it. You know that stuff. Tari Eason has had flashes, even these last few games. And we showed Jabari so much love in the beginning of the season. You and I, we did videos. People thought we were crazy. They called him a bus, and we were like, chill the fuck out. He's not a bus. And the dude legitimately took the team over. When Jalen got hurt around the All-Star game with that groin injury, Jabari's like, it's me. It's my show. Fuck you, mm-hmm. Sengun. Watch this. You know what I mean? And he had monster games for a couple weeks, and he was able to maintain that for a while. And, <clears throat> like, I just carry it over. Yeah. Not for sure. That's what, I mean, I'm, that's why I feel like Houston fans, it's, it's going to be fine. Like, we, we – Enjoy the ride right now. It's coming to an end for this year, but the next year it should be on a brighter horizon for sure. Um, I mean, if you made it to this point, man, like, subscribe to the network. We got you covered on all Houston sports, Astros, Texans, Rockets. If you want to check out our Jabari video, I will post it right here below me. And if you want to check out the Victor video of how we can get him or Scoot or whoever, you can be right under Zach. But that's it, Houston. Let us know who, what head coach you think we're going to get, who you want. If you want a new GM, let us know, and we're out.